Welcome back to UGC Net English classes. In the last class, we discussed uh, some of the topics like text, the world of languages, and the world of literature. In today's class, we are going to discuss the Greek or Roman literature, literature from both Greece and also from Italy. When we discuss the Greek or Roman literature, there would be a doubt why should we discuss them together? I mean, the literature from Greece and the literature from Italy. So, Rome is a place in Italy. Rome is the capital of Italy. We know that. So, why should we consider literature from Italy and also Greece together? Because these two countries are connected on many grounds, especially cultural and historical connections, these two countries share. We know that both Greece and uh, Italy are countries belonging to the European continent. So these countries are close to the Mediterranean Sea. So we can together call these countries or the area as the Mediterranean world. So both Greece and Roma, Mediterranean countries. And as we said, these places share so many common you know, features and also some connections both culturally and historically. That's why we take these, I mean, the literature from both these countries together and we call them Greek or Roman literature. So when we talk about the historical connections, uh, we can say Greeks had settled in southern Italy and Sicily since the 8th century BC. So from 8th century BC, you know, Greeks had a connection with Italy. So Greeks had settled in Italy and also in Sicily. Sicily is a region in Italy. So Sicily is a place in Italy. So Italy is Sicily and Roman areas were places where people from Greece had settled during the 8th century BC time period. Now let's see what all periods come under the Greek or Roman literature culture. So first we can see the Dark Ages in the Greek or Roman literature. Then the second period, pre-classical or archaic period. And the third period, the classical period. And after the classical period, the Hellenistic period. And the Hellenistic period is followed by the Roman period. And after the Roman period, it was the Byzantine period. Uh, after the Byzantine period, we can say the modern period in a Greek or Roman literature began. So, chronologically, we can say the Dark Ages, then pre-classical or archaic period, then the classical period, then the Hellenistic period, then the Roman period, then the Byzantine period, and then the modern Greek period. Now let's uh, go to the these periods in a detailed fashion. First, when we discuss the Dark Ages, the Dark Ages in the Greek or Roman literature, uh, we can say it began about 1100 BC. 
and it will last it till the beginning of the archaic age that we can say was around 750 BC. So the Dark Ages, we, of course we know the Dark Ages, not that much work or any non-work really exist from the Dark Ages. So it lasted from 1100 BC to the beginning of the Archaic Age, around 750 BC. After the Dark Ages of the Greek-Roman literature, next was the Pre-Classical or the Archaic Period. The Archaic Period that began about 800 BC and it lasted till 500 BC. So, about 300 years, the Pre-Classical or Archaic Period lasted in a Greek or Roman literature. Now let's see who all dominated the arena of literature in a pre-classical or the archaic period in Greece and also in Rome. So of course the most famous was the one of the greatest epic poets, Homer. Homer who has written two great epics the Iliad and the Odyssey. So Homer has written the Iliad and the Odyssey. It is believed that Homer was blind. So Homer is considered a blind poet, a blind epic poet. The name Homer in a Greek means hostage or blind. So his name itself indicated that he was a person who had no eyesight because the word homa in a Greek language means hostage or blind. In Plato's work, The Republic, Homer is portrayed as the leader of Greek culture. So we can see in a Plato's work, The Republic, Homer is portrayed as a leader of the Greek culture. After Homer, we can see another writer whose name was Hesiod. Hesiod is often called the first written poet in a Western tradition. Though there is a controversy whether Homer was the first written poet or Hesiod. So some say it was Hesiod, not Homer. So Hesiod was called the first written poet in a Western tradition. But some say it is Homer. And Hesiod has written two most famous works. His works include Theogony and Walks and Days. Walks and Days and Theogony are the two most famous works written by the writer Hesiod. The next writer who belongs to the pre-classical or archaic period in the Roman or Greek or Roman literature, we can see after Homer and Hesiod was the writer Sappho. Sappho. So when you hear the name Sappho, don't misunderstand that it is the name of a man. Sappho was a woman. She was a woman. So Sappho, known for her lyric poetry, so Sappho was a poetess who was known for her lyric poetry, sung accompanied by a lyre. So we know that a lyric is sung accompanied by a 
Lyre. Lyre is a string instrument, a musical instrument, a string instrument it was. She is called Tenth Muse. So Sappho, the poetess Sappho was called Tenth Muse and the poetess. The poetess and also Tenth Muse are the other names. The poetess Sappho is non wit and her famous work include order to aphrodite and also the titonus poem so the two famous works written by the poetess sappho are the titonus poem and also order to aphrodite So these are the three most famous pre-classical or archaic period writers of the Greek Roman literature. So who were they? First one Homer, Hesiod and a Sappho. So Homer's they lay down on the R.E.C. Hesiod's work, Theogony and also works and days and a Sappho's works or Daphrodite and the Titonus poem. After the pre-classical and archaic period, we can see the classical period starting in a Greek or Roman literature in around 510 BC. So from 510 BC to the death of Alexander the Great in a 323 BC, it is the classical period in Greek or Roman literature. Now let's see who all dominated the classical period of Greek or Roman literature. First in the line was pre-Socratic philosophers. Pre-Socratic philosophers means there were so many famous philosophers even before the name of Socrates coming to the world of philosophy. So before Socrates, there were so many great philosophers. So those who dominated the classical period include Pythagoras, Parmenides, Anaximander, Heraclitus. So these were the pre-Socratic philosophers. That means philosophers who were famous before the coming of Socrates. So Pythagoras, Parmenides, Anaximander, Heraclitus, etc. After these pre-Socratic philosophers, we see so many other famous dramatists, famous dramatists like Aeschylus. Aeschylus is a dramatist who is most famous for his work, a trilogy. A trilogy means a collection of three works. So his Trilogy is named Orestia Trilogy. Aeschylus collection that is the Orestia Trilogy. Then the next dramatist or playwright was Sophocles. Sophocles had his line of works namely Oedipus Tyrannus, Oedipus Eticolonus, Antigon, etc. So after Aeschylus, equally famous was the writer Sophocles and his books include Oedipus Tyrannus, Oedipus Eticolonus, Antigon, etc. Then another dramatist was the whose name was 
Yari Pires, Yari Pires, who has written the works like Maria, Hippolytus, Electra, etc. So, Yari Pires' famous works include Media, Hippolytus, Electra, etc. Besides these famous writers, another dramatist was the whose name was Aristophanes. Aristophanes, who had written the famous works like The Clouds, The Birds, The Frogs, Lysistratum, etc. So Aristophanes was another famous dramatist who had his contributions through the works like The Clouds, The Birds, The Frogs, Lysistrata, etc. So these were the most famous playwrights of the classical period. So who were they? Aeschylus, Sophocles, Euripides, Aristophanes. So Aeschylus' work, the Orestia trilogy, Sophocles' works, Oedipus Tyrannus, Oedipus at Colonus and Antica. And Euripides works include Maria, Hippolytus, Electra, etc. And coming to Aristophanes, we can see the works like The Clouds, The Frogs, The Birds, Lysistrata, etc. Then in the classical period of Greek or Roman literature, we could see the poet Pindar, Pindar, who had written some famous odes, famous odes like the Victory Odes. So Pindar's The Victory Odes, written in four books based on the names of four games. So Pindar had written odes based on the names of four games. So these four games are the Olympian, Pythian, the Isthmian and the Nemean games. So the writer, the poet Pindar had written the work The Victory Odes in four books based on the names of four games respectively the Olympian, Pythian, Isthmian and the Namian games. Olympian, Pythian, Isthmian and the Namian games. The Victory Odes in four books written by the poet Pindar from the classical period of Greek or Roman literature. Then after these writers, we can see another philosopher, one of the most famous philosophers of the world, Socrates, Socrates, who had his work, Dialogues. So Socrates is famous for his Dialogues that we call the Socratic Dialogues. Then we can see another great philosopher of the ancient world, Socrates. We had already discussed the pre Socratic philosophers. So, who were the pre Socratic philosophers? Pythagoras. Parmenides, Anaximander, Heraclitus. So Socrates, next to philosopher is Socrates. So Socrates is famous for his dialogues. That is what we call the famous Socratic dialogues. Then after Socrates, we see other philosophers 
like Plato. Plato, who had his famous works like Apology, the Republic, Symposium, etc. So Plato's famous works include Apology, the Republic, Symposium, etc. The next in line after Plato was Aristotle. Aristotle wrote the famous works like the Poetics, the Rhetoric, the Nicomachean Ethics, etc. So Aristotle is famous for the Poetics, the Rhetoric, the Nicomachean Ethics. Now let's see the connection among these people. Socrates, we said Socrates was a philosopher and his student was Plato. So Plato was the student of Socrates. So as we can say Plato was the disciple of Socrates or Socrates was the teacher of Plato. Now Plato taught Aristotle. So Aristotle was the student of Plato. So Socrates taught Plato. Plato taught in his turn Aristotle. And Aristotle taught whom did Aristotle teach? There was a famous ruler, world famous uh, emperor whom Aristotle did teach. Who was there? There was Alexander the Great. So Alexander the Great was the student of Aristotle. Socrates taught Plato. Plato taught Aristotle. Aristotle taught Alexander the Great. So remember Socrates, Socratic dialogues, Plato's apology, the Republic, and also Symposium. Then Aristotle's work, the Poetics, the Rhetoric, and the Nicomachean Ethics. Now after the classical period in the Greek or Roman literature, we come to the Hellenistic period, the Hellenistic or Greek period. That is between the death of uh, Alexander the Great in 323 BC and the rise of Augustus Caesar in Rome in the 31st BC. So, next period is Hellenistic period. The Hellenistic period from 323 BC to 31st BC. Coming to the Hellenistic period, we can see writers like Menander, Menander, who was a Greek writer. Menander was the representative of Athenian New Comedy. So Menander was a representative of Athenian New Comedy. And Menander's famous works include Discolos, Discolos, and also Samia, Samia and the Discolos, written by Menante. After Menante, there was the writer Plotus, Plotus. Plotus was a Roman writer who had written works like Persia, Amphitro, the British Menachmi, etc. So Plotus famous works include Persia, Amphitro, the British Menachmi. After Plotus, 
There was an equally famous writer like Terence. Terence. Terence was famous for his works. Antria. Hezira. And the Eunuchs. So Terence's famous works include Antria, Hezira, and the Eunuchs. Now let's see what was the importance of Hellenistic period, the Greek period. Because the Greek period or the Hellenistic period writing style influenced so many writers who came after the Hellenistic period. So these writers were the famous writers. That now we know the writers like Virgil, Horace, Ovid. So the poetry of Virgil, Harris and Ovid are all based on the Hellenistic style. So the Hellenistic style in a writing really influenced the Roman period writers like Virgil, Harris, Ovid. So Hellenistic period writers were, most famous writers were Mananta, Plotus and Terence. Menantes works, Discolos and Asamia. Lotus works, Persia, Amphitro, and the Brothers, Menagme. Torrens work, Andrea, Hecara, and the Eunuchs. After the Hellenistic period, next is the Roman period. The Roman period starts from 31st BC to 324 AD. That means from the reign of Augustus Caesar. Augustus Caesar's reign that starts from 31st BC. As we said, the Roman period writers were influenced by the writers of the Hellenistic period. So the Roman period writers, the most famous writers were Virgil, Horace, Ovid, Seneca, etc. So first we will discuss Virgil. Virgil was the author of the books like the Aeneid, Echolops. Judges, etc. So the famous Roman writer Virgil's works include the Aeneid, Echolaus, Judges. Next writer is Horace. Horace's works include the famous work Ars Poetica. Horace Ars Poetica. After Horace, it was Ovid. Ovid has written the works like The Metamorphosis and Ars Amatoria. Ars Amatoria means the art of love. The art of love or Ars Amatoria. Then after Ovid, there was uh, another person, Seneca. Seneca was uh, another Roman writer who had written the works like Thestus, Phaedra, etc. Phaedra and Thestus, written by Seneca. So the famous Roman period writers include Virgil, Horace, Ovid, Seneca. Virgil's work, the Aeneid, Echologues, Georgics, Harris Box, As Particle, Ovid's Work, The Metamorphosis, and As Amatoria, also called it, The Art of Love, and as Seneca's Box, Tastis, and a Phaedra. 
Then after the ancient Greek or Roman period comes the next period. That is Byzantine period. The Byzantine period. And then the Byzantine period comes the modern Greek period. Now, next is, after the Roman period is Byzantine period. The Byzantine period starts from 324 AD to 1453 AD. So, from 324 AD to 1453, 1453 AD is the Byzantine period. The Byzantine Empire was the eastern half of the Roman Empire. So the eastern half of the Roman Empire was called the Byzantine Empire. Byzantine Empire was the most powerful economic, cultural and military center in Europe. So it was the most powerful economic, cultural and also military center of Europe. And in 1453, the Turkish Sultan Mehmet II defeated Constantine XI. So in 1453, the Turkish Sultan Mehmet II defeated Constantine XI. Then Byzantium subsequently lost all its territories. So after this, Byzantium lost all its territories. Then what happened? The fall of Constantinople in 1453 entered the Byzantine Empire. So the fall of Constantinople in 1453. So Constantinople was the center of, you know, culture and education. It was the center of culture and education where all these scholars, teachers, philosophers, everyone congregated. So the idea of knowledge and it was considered the center of knowledge. So after the, you know, destruction of Constantinople in 1453 philosophers teachers and everyone started leaving the place thus they reached different parts of the world and the classic works and all the famous works and so many knowledge ideas that were kept you know away from the poor people or the common people those books and everything started spreading after this. So the fall of Constantinople is very, very important. That happened in 1453. With this fall, you know, knowledge spread in other parts of the world, other parts of the country, and uh, books, so many books were translated to other languages. That's why Const the fall of Constantinople is considered very, very important. Because till that day, power was uh, the power of uh, knowledge or uh, the power of you know philosophy everything was kept only in that particular area the power the center of knowledge and power there was constantinople after the byzantine period comes the modern period that is from 1453 onwards so modern period, Greek or Roman writers include Nikos Kazantzakis, Constantine P. Kawafi, Arisius Alitis, etc. So we started the Greek or Roman period from the Dark Ages. The Dark Ages then pre-classical or the archaic period, then the classical period, then the Hellenistic period, then the Roman period, and the Byzantine period, 
in the modern Greek period. That's all for today. In the next class, we will discuss the history of English language and literature, part first.